Hi everyone and welcome to our diversity and inclusion chat with Vera Rautio. My name is Emma Koskinen and I'm leading the recruitment and employer branding here in Capgemini and I'm really happy to have Vera today here with us. Honored to be here. So why are we then today here to talk about diversity and inclusion? Well, um, in Capgemini we have more than 280,000 people uh, from all over the world, so it makes pretty much sense for us to discuss cultural awareness and diversity and inclusion themes. And Vera for us is a very special person because everyone in Capgemini meets Vera during the onboarding as we have cultural awareness trainings uh, by Vera for everyone. So that's how we know each other. Mm -hmm. Great. So Vera, now finally I'll give you the chance to introduce yourself. So tell us a little bit. Who are you and what are you doing here today? Right. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my name is Vera and uh, I am uh, an intercultural coach, intercultural uh, trainer, consultant and a coach and I've had the opportunity to be working with a whole variety of people since I was four years old. So uh, sometimes people ask me, how did I get to, to do this type of work? What's my qualifications? And I was born in Lapland in uh, minus 35 degrees and then when I was four years old my family moved to plus 35 degrees so I've spent my childhood in in Africa in a bunch of different countries a little short time in Latin America and, and then in Southeast Asia so I've had the chance to live and work with people on basically all of the continents save for two <laughs> And um, uh, my background is that I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been building businesses for the last 20 years, been involved in, in the birth and, and growth and reselling of, of 10 different business ventures. So I'm really happy and I, and I really enjoy working with these multicultural and, and diversity topics because I have a passion for it. I think it's one of the most important things that we can do to, you know, to get along and to really achieve the types of outcomes and results that we're looking for in the world of business today. Wow, that sounds interesting and definitely that you really know what you're talking about. Well, I learn more every day. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, okay, then I think now when we have introduced ourselves that we can actually go to today's theme. Mm -hmm. So today we will talk about culture, that's our first theme. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when we talk about culture in, in this context, what does it actually mean? That's a really good question and it's actually a really deep question because many times, um, I don't know if you know the story of uh, the fish, you know, uh, there's the, the older fish and the younger fish and uh, culture, it's, it's a little bit of a story about culture. It's something that surrounds all of us. It's something that, that is so close to us that it's almost like the space right between our nostrils that you know we live and breathe through that, but we are, are usually not really aware that we even have such a thing until we go to some place where it's, di it's different, where the waters are different, so to say. So the example of, of the, the story of the fish, you've got the old fish and the, the smaller, younger fish, and the, the big, experienced, older fish comes along, swings along in the, in the oceans and says to the younger little fish, hey guys, how's the water? And the little fish say, what the heck is water? <laughs> because it's something that they're in all day, every day. So, so culture is, in this context, we're not talking about cultural phenomena like the ballet or, or uh, you know, how buildings are built or the symbolism of colors or such things. We're talking about how we as human beings arrange ourselves and how we uh, value things and how, what kinds of meanings we place on, on things. How, th how stuff happens at work, that's the culture. <laughs> that we're most interested in. Good, and that actually leads us to the next question that do we actually bring our culture to work or how does it impact our work? That's a good question as well. I think we, um, you know, sometimes in certain business organizations I've worked with, there's this, this sort of um, hope that we would maybe leave our emotions at home or we would just like concentrate and focus on getting work done. Um, 
if we were artificial intelligence or if we were machines and robots, that may be possible, but we are humans, so our, our neuropsychological makeup is not wired in such a way that it's even possible for us to leave our culture at home. Culture is so, so much a part of us and, and affects how we perceive things, what kinds of meaning we attach to things. So culture is always there <laughs> in, in everything we do at work. Uh, it has to do with concept of time, it has to do with um, how we relate to hierarchy or positions of power, it has to do with how we interpret, for example, facial expressions or, or uh, any type of body language. It's, it's in everything. Yeah, well, then, then I'm just wondering that uh, what comes actually from the culture and what comes from the personal personality traits. So can I claim something on, okay, this is just part of my culture because I'm acting like this, or how much is culture, how much is personality? How does it show at work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, in the, in the culture trainings and, and diversity awareness trainings that we do, this is actually something that we look into quite a bit because there's many levels of culture. There's national culture and then there's ethnic heritage and then there's organizational culture and then there's even team culture. There's There can be quite a variety depending on who your manager is or how things are arranged. And, and then, of course, there's your family culture, how you grew up. How you, um, you know, resolve conflict, for example, are you the kind of person who, who tends to really openly express their opinions or that are you the type who tends to be a little bit more contained um, with expressing disagreement, for example. Um, all of us have a unique personality and still um, I'd like to pick up on what you said about um, you know, excusing behavior. Oh, I'm like this because I have such and such culture. Um, it's never an excuse to, 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 for example, refuse collaboration with somebody or I'm like this cause. But it is true that, that some cultures have an influence on, for example, sense of time. Like, do you prioritize the human relationship or do you, do you prioritize being on time to, to a meeting, for example? Um, but I would say that uh, these two things are interlinked in the sense that the more we are aware of who we are as a person and our own personal preferences, our own cultural awareness, and the more aware we can be of, of the preferences of somebody else who might be a little bit different to us, the easier it is for us to, to get along and to be able to influence our interactions together. So culture is important, but knowing who you are and knowing how to build trust with somebody whose personality might be very different from yours, I think that's that's a key thing. Yeah, and, and uh, <clears throat> I think this is also interesting in this way that we will discuss a little bit more about actually why it's so important to understand the different cultures. But then on the other hand also, where goes the line that how much we should understand mm -hmm the differences and, and uh, accept certain kind of things and where can kind of goes the line in the company that the company culture versus the individual cultures. Ah, now that's a really, it's actually a difficult question and, and it has a lot to do with uh, the values of the organization and, and the company that we're talking about. And I would say that it goes both ways. You can't have a um, you know, you can't resolve an outcome where one side of the conversation is consistently being understanding and listening. It's not just a question of, of understanding and, and listening, but it's also a question of being able to persuade and influence and negotiate. So mm -hmm. it's always a two-way street. And, uh, and it, when we're working with, a, with an organization, we of course have to uh, embody the values and, and the code of conduct and the culture of that organization, regardless of what our personal background might be. And in, a, in an organization as big as this, for example, you know, we're looking at over 200,000 people, that's a quarter of a million people, that's a whole lot of diversity. So we need to be mindful but of course, we don't change ourselves. We just learn how to interact with a, a wide, a diverse variety of different people, I would say. Mm. Yeah. 
interesting. And then if, if we think about then the differences, what would you say are the biggest concepts mm -hmm. there? Because um, of course there are many little things, but if we think about the big things, like you mentioned already, maybe concept of time, but mm -hmm. what are the other ones that you would think it's good to consider or keep in mind? Oh, how long do we have? <laughs> it's a huge topic and, and there's been, of course, a lot of research done over the years uh, on intercultural communication and intercultural influence. Um, and there's eight sort of eight um, distinct things that that the culture as a phenomenon can be divided up into um, and those are very everyday types of things like for example concept of time um, how we for example disagree how do we evaluate things do we agree to dis how do we agree to disagree or mm -hmm. how how do we handle feedback or um, do we go into topics with uh, the, the sort of big picture first or do we go into topics the sort of um, at practical tactical applications first so there's a whole variety of things there but I think the key ones would be um, our approach to to leadership what kind of leadership is you know works for us and what kind of leadership do we do we value uh, within the team and within the clients that and the projects that we work in and of course time is quite critical as well Yeah Then uh, if we think about that We don't take this into consideration and we don't understand each other's what's the problem or what can happen? What is the issue there? Wow <laughs> Well, I think though We can see in in global politics. What is the issue and what can happen? We can you know ultimately we can lose lose life, we can lose our livelihood, we can lose our homes and our, and our way of living. But, but if we go into the world of business, we can lose a lot of money is <laughs> left on the table because if we are unable to resolve, we're unable to, to navigate uh, intercultural conflict, then someone else will be able to navigate that. And that means someone else is making the contracts, someone else is sending those invoices. So, <laughs> yes. yeah. Yes, so so basically that that leads to to us to the next next question, which a little bit similar already to the theme that why is the inclusive inclusivity then so important? Mm -hmm. Then you mentioned already that we might actually lose money if we don't take it into consideration consideration and someone else will take it. Yeah. But is there something else still there? Of course, of course. And and in the world of business, I my experience is that um, money doesn't necessarily make money by itself. It requires people yes. <laughs> in the in between. So so it requires building trust. And and how that works is we are you know humans trust other humans whom they know and they like, and then therefore the trust is grown. As, as an end result of, of successful interactions over time. And um, for us to be able to, like why is diversity and inclusion so important? Because, you know, if you're only able to do business with people who are like yourself, who have the same beliefs, the same mindset, who eat the same food, who use the same currency and, and you know, sure, you can achieve certain outcomes, but the world is, you know, we've got how many billion people on this planet and how many opportunities we're missing out on if we're only able to influence interactions and, and create collaboration with those who are already of the same mindset as ourselves. That's why I think diversity and inclusion is important, not just necessarily, um, you know, male, female, uh, but also diversity in, in terms of obviously with national cultures, ethnicities, belief systems, but also things like neurodivergence, you know, people have, have different, um, you know, neurologies mm -hmm. and and we've got uh, uh, there's so much potential in being able to communicate effectively with a whole variety of people I think that's why it's important because no human is exactly alike to another human being and the more we're able to to achieve um, trust and and before trust, even appreciation and liking and getting along with people who are different to ourselves, 
uh, the more likely we are to also uh, have a good time at work mm. because you know um, like like we said yes business is about making money but it's the human beings who make the money and also um, these days how people become motivated to even come to or, or um, be involved in a particular career or in a particular corporate company, um, how welcome they feel and how the collaboration within that team works. I find that's a really big, big key point in attracting talent and retaining talent. I mean, it's, it's a global competition. So <laughs> yes. the ones that are, that are, you know, fun and positive and, and uplifting to hang out with, those are the ones that tend to also have the best profit and yeah. the most satisfied customers. So. That's true. That's Long very true. Long answer. <laughs> yeah. no, but it's a team that we could uh, discuss the, the whole day about just the culture itself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it goes the other way around. I would say that also the companies that can, can actually um, have diversity and diverse teams, they, they will attract the talent in the future as well. Because at least I see the, the big advantage of working in a, in, in a global yeah. multinational company that it's such a richness to work with absolutely such a diverse group of people and actually there's some research that a few years back google and um, maybe you you've read the same article but uh, google put in a lot of money and a lot of time into researching they they looked in depth at 120 different teams what they were looking for was what actually makes um you know makes an excellent team and, and they were looking at different variables, uh, things like competence or should the people be alike, should the people be different or, or how would that work? Mm -hmm. And the real ultimate kicker for those teams that were consistently performing above average and, and achieving excellent outcomes, um, the kicker was trust. Like how okay was it to fail mm -hmm. in that team? And and all of the other variables really, yes, there's some influence into the outcome, but the kicker was being able to work together with people and overcome difficult circumstances and, 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 and you know, disagree in productive ways and even um, go through something that didn't actually work out really well. Because at the end of that, they ended up building more trust trust capital in between each other and out of that being being able to innovate something new so yeah yeah it's uh i i, I agree that i can see that already also in everyday life that yeah. i think the trust is is the most important mm -hmm. part of of uh, yes having a successful company culture or yeah. a successful team or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, definitely I can agree on that. Great, but hey, I, I was thinking as a last question for today's session to actually still to distinct a little bit, what is the difference? Because we talk about diversity and we talk about inclusion mm -hmm. and and maybe those terms can even be fixed, uh, mixed, sorry, a little mm -hmm. bit. That yeah that uh, we talk about inclusion when we actually mean diversity or the yeah. other way around mm -hmm. so how would you define the difference between those two so or how do we get from the diversity to the inclusion side ah more excellent questions um definitely they do play into each other but i would say that you can only have genuine inclusion when you accept the diversity <laughs> when you are okay with the fact that somebody may see something from a very different um, point of view and they may inclusion is <clears throat> it's not an automatic byproduct of mm -hmm. diversity and in fact inclusion is is I think more difficult for us as adult you know grown-up adults if you look at small kids playing in in daycare centers or in a playground together when they're you know under four years old <laughs> diversity is not an issue inclusion is not an issue or it becomes an issue when you're trying to play with somebody and they either want to play with you or they don't want to play with you mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
Yeah. And then we grow up and, and we get careers and we get fancy positions in great global companies. Um, and still, at the end of the day, we're all five years old. So, <laughs> but I think inclusion becomes more easy mm -hmm. if you are well seasoned with diversity and you, are, you have more exposure to a variety of people yes. and you have a lot more tools to deal with different types of situations. So if you only get, get experience in, in a very limited amount of, of different circumstances, then it's, you know, I guess harder to be very really inclusive mm -hmm. because everything that's strange is foreign and, and by default a little bit scary or weird. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know if that's a good answer, if that helps. <laughs> that is a good answer. I think it explained it really well. And uh, also kind of that's why it's so important, or why we feel it's so important to have this cultural awareness as part of our onboarding mm -hmm. journey, that uh, to raise the awareness and, and make it less scary for, for people and, and yeah. to understand each other better. Absolutely. And also we can all have a good time and having a good time create better results. Exactly. Great. That was very interesting uh, discussion. Thank, Thank you, you Vera. So much. Uh, but yeah, we are, we are not done yet uh, <laughs> because we will continue next time. Mm -hmm. And next time we will actually go to the little bit to the other side. So we will discuss what happens when actually the cultures collide. So I think that's something we cannot avoid. It will mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should even happen. We'll mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. So next time we're going to discuss more about that. But thank you so much, Vera, for coming today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.